What's up guys, it's Carlos. Uh, I'm a woodworker with a beard, so you know I don't have a personality. So try and enjoy the woodworking instead. I had a niece who loved this stool. And when I looked at this, I'm like, I wanna build one for my, for my baby. Whenever I have one, I have to build one around this size and around this shape, but better. This is, you know, dowel construction with some dovetails and a walnut live edge river king thing. Uh, it doesn't have the handle. I mean, a poxy river table is more important than functionality, and you can always grab it from the leg. Um, and as you can see, I made some mistakes along the way. Um, this is my first piece of furniture, actually. Uh, so hang in with me and watch the video. I decided to make this video after I make the cuts for the legs, uh, but basically, it's they're foot tall. The middle pieces on top are seven inches with a seven degree cut. I can give you all the dimensions on the comments uh, because I'm not trying to sell you some plants. But basically, I I did those first. I epoxied them together and then I measured where I wanted my other two cross pieces. And then I went out to Woodworker Source and I bought myself a quarter inch dowel. Uh, I already had the quarter inch bit. Basically, I'm doing two dowels on one side and one dowel on the other. I make a lot of mistakes here, and we're going to see just exactly how much I mess up. Eyeballing my dowels, I want them about two inches long. The thickness of the legs is one inch by one inch, so two inches should be pretty good. Some material should stick out for me to uh, flush cut later. Uh, as you can see, I don't have a bench hook. All I got is some pegs and a scrub piece of walnut. But as you can see, my bench is made out of Douglas fir, not hardwood because I'm not a billionaire. However, I wanted a woodworking bench, not an assembly table. So I went with Douglas fir, which was only a million dollars. Yeah, I'm just kind of eyeballing where I want uh, two dowels and one dowel. I think that ratio uh, pattern will look really good. And I'm using a pilot hole before I go all the way up to a quarter inch. Uh, I think the dowels, the dowel came out pretty good. Good. Uh, like I said, walnut would have been nice, but red oak has a pretty good shimmer and contrast to the maple. By the way, the legs are hard maple, and the cross members are ambrosia maple. Because I wanted that contrast. I really wanted all the bells and whistles for these uh, stool. I'm really punching uh, far above my weight class here. So before drilling a quarter inch hole and putting a quarter inch dowel on your piece of furniture, you should probably test it. Uh, I'm not doing that. Proceeds to fill miserably. A uh, quarter inch hole and a quarter inch dowel was just not going to work. I even broke my epoxy as you can see here. Long story short, I'm gonna taper these a little bit and then I'm gonna sand the body a little bit just with 400. Can you even hear me over the freaking drill? Probably not. So I wanna make them slightly, very li slightly smaller. I don't want a whole bunch coming off of them. So I think 400. So I think 400 will work, and it will. So I just put the dowel on a chuck, and you know, doing that. Okay, times however many I gotta do. And that worked a lot better. Uh, I was able to put in all the dowels in there. Uh, I am gluing the hole and the dowel, and the piece of maple I use actually for the stool was a giant piece of maple my father-in-law had in his shed for a decade. Uh, I think it's pretty romantic that a piece of maple was waiting for my daughter for a decade on my sweat girl's shed. And so I proceed to sand the body just a little tiny bit and it's 400. You know, 220 would take off too much too fast. Uh, tapered the tips and just hammered in, in all of them. Uh, two on one face and four on another face. I know I didn't go through the legs a whole bunch uh, because joinery is hard and you can always do pocket holes 
uh, in all seriousness, if you guys want me to redo the legs, uh, give you guys measurements and angles, and not make as many mistakes while I do it, comment down below, because I have some experience now, and, and I can do a whole lot better. Now to flush cut all of them, I went pretty close. I should have done like a playing card at the bottom, but I didn't. I just went flush. The reason I'm using this saw is because it's the only saw I have, and it works great. I got it at Harbor Freight for $11. So it took me a while to decide whether or not I was going to do um, walnut dovetail cross members on this stool. And honestly, it's what brings everything together uh, because the walnut top and it just has a little bit of contrast with the maple, but then those dovetails, you know, bring it in all together. And this is just scrap that my dad gave me from a job. Uh, he's a contractor. He gave me a box of walnut and like a bucket of cedar. But yeah, I'm playing the burnt marks off of it and just giving them a much better surface. Again, this Cali Astro Amazon thing, um, it's not great. But I got it to work, and that's what I've been using because that's what I have. And, you know, you got to use what you have to make or to get what you want. So this is what I have. I had $60. I know there's better ones for a couple hundred, but I didn't have a couple hundred. I had $60. It's time for the half lap dovetails. I'm just going to measure down, like just eyeballing what would look good. Um, placing the walnut there, trying to clamp it down, and then marking it with a marking knife, the outside and the inside, you know, cutting that way I can cut them to length. But that way I know where the shoulders of my dov dovetails would go. Um, this was actually the funnest part of the build, the little dovetail inlays. A little bit stressful because, you know, because dovetails look hard. Uh, here's my $3 vise. Uh, yeah, these clamps are three dollars or Harbor Freight. I do not recommend them. I use Bessies at work, and they work so much better. But anyway, here I proceed to clamp my thing down. It actually worked. I had to use my hand a lot to hold it up against the table. And now here's me thinking I'm James Wright. I was like, oh, I don't have any lines to, <laughs> to follow. <laughs> it's pretty cool how James does that. And yeah, I, I just drew some random lines and put it back on my $3 clamp. I, I, watch, I watch the channel Wood by Right a lot. So I just drew down whatever I liked, whatever looked aesthetically pleasing to me. And that's what I went. Honestly, I'm, like I said, I'm really happy with my dovetails. Uh, they're not perfect, but they're very close. Yeah, I remember watching Rex Kruger's uh, dovetails on the little box he made. And honestly, they came out a lot better than that. I mean, <laughs> no offense. But I'm not making a box. Maybe next time I'll do a box. But I followed what Rex said and what James Wright says about dovetails. I know I'm very being very casual on this video, but I think that's how woodworking as a hobby should be. Uh, especially if you're building something for yourself. You should just m make what you want to make, what looks good to you, and use what you have. I have a pull saw, and that's what I'm using for everything. I have a few chisels that I bought for construction, and they work just fine as long as you keep them kind of sharp. Uh, but if any question you guys might have regarding this build or a different build or a project you have going, or if you just want to tell me what project you got, uh, let me know in the comments. I'll answer each and every single question I get. Dovetail so fine you could wear them as a hat. And yeah, just clamping them down. These are Bessies from Home Depot. They work great. Uh, marking them down with a marking knife, not pencil. I wish my dovetails were a little bit straighter, though. They're a little bit rounded, uh, which was a problem because my chisels are not rounded. They're flat. And now I'm using my pull saw to, to mark some pretty clear lines uh, so that when I take the material off with the router, I have like a, like a stop, like a pretty clear stop line. And then I clean it up with a chisel. I know I have the footage, but I can't find it. So, yeah. And then, you know, put glue on your tails and put glue on your pins, I guess that would be called. And hammer it down. Make sure it connects to the back so that the glue glues. 
using a piece of wood to hit it all the way down. Now I'm just trying to envision the top, like how I'm going to cut it, how the river's going to go, etc. You know, sometimes you have to become the furniture in order to build the furniture. But no, seriously, dovetails so nice you can wear them as a hat. So here you see me acting like I know what I'm doing. Uh, slapping some wood around with my big red square. But here uh, I make a big mistake. I'm cutting it uh, short widths. Uh, and I should not have done that. I should have call it, cut it long ways first, finding the center, uh, and then drawing some squared lines from that long line, and then cut those. Instead, I cut it short ways first, and then draw a square line, and cut it long ways. No bueno, I could have... It could have been bad, I could have wasted a $30 piece of wood, which is what this was. The other trick I learned from, well, I didn't learn this from John Malecki, but John Malecki was saying on his YouTube channel that uh, he cuts live edge first with a jigsaw, because there's a lot of tension, which is true, on live edge pieces. So what I did is cut about 60% through the slab, and then cut the rest by hand. I didn't do this to square it off after the, the live edge pour, epoxy pour, so I ran into some trouble. Uh, try and be safe out there. Uh, comment down below how you choose to cut live edge slabs so that other people may learn from you. So yeah, this is where I do all my hand cutting, and honestly, I wish I was this good and this fast. I am not. I'm still learning the art of the pole saw. And hopefully uh, someday I can get like a traditional, you know, like American or British uh, push saw. Maybe like a dovetail one would be cool. So my mold is simple. It's from a closet, an Ikea closet. Um, we had to cut it down for a house and this piece was just free. Well, actually a couple of pieces were free. I was throwing them away, so I brought them home. And now they're going to be part of my mold. So I'm caulking everything down. Uh, which is regular latex painter's caulk, uh, fast drying. Uh, the thing about this is, if you make it watertight, like a roof, or you know, a bathroom, then you shouldn't have any leaks. So I'm not screwing it down or anything. Just using caulk at the bottom of my walls, and I'm using this tape so that the epoxy doesn't stick to the wood. But yeah, I'm caulking down the actual wood down which was probably a mistake I should probably use tape on the wood and then tape on the shelf and then caulk and then I caulk the outside walls there's really nothing special about my mold it's you know basically free uh, maybe 50 cents worth of caulking and like a dollar worth of tape it's very important to use good quality epoxy Liquid glass is recommended by a lot of people who do great, great multi-thousand dollar pieces of furniture. So that is what I use, and it has given me great results. It does suck that it takes three days uh, to dry, but it is what it is. Uh, read the directions very carefully. It comes with some very good directions and recommendations. If you have any question, call them. Okay, take your time. Uh, to do this right because it's one dollar an ounce around that price depending on how much volume you buy I buy three quarters of a gallon at a time uh, mix thoroughly it's about five minutes and make sure you get all around the cup all the corners and whatnot uh, no shortcuts when it comes to epoxy uh, again it's an expensive material and the pigments are expensive, the, everything's expensive when you're uh, doing epoxy from from the beginning. But, you know, I suggest you buy some and you play with it. Uh, here I'm putting four drops of black, which was too much. I wanted this river to see to be kind of see-through, uh, kind of like tinted glass. And it actually came out a little dark. Red directions, mix thoroughly, uh, make sure temperature is around recommended uh, so do it indoors with air conditioning uh, right now it's kind of hot in AC so I put it inside all my pores are inside with AC uh, insulated walls etc no multi thousand dollar spill here
just the little baby river no spills all you gotta do is make it watertight uh, that's my sewing machine I am mechanics a million and a half years later I'm demolding it I'm just using a flat screwdriver that I found somewhere uh, in my desk <laughs> and obviously my super professional chopstick as a wedge and ultimately I drive uh, some electric strippers uh, stripper pliers to demold it but it came out great the mold worked no spills no nothing it was pretty easy to demold it wasn't like a giant deal or anything uh, I didn't need to bust out a hammer or nothing and I didn't use any demolding thing I just just the tape now you see me using this like Harbor Freight track clamp thing uh, I've only been using it like for two things and honestly I like it uh, obviously I would prefer a table saw I would prefer a track saw I would prefer whatever but I'm using what I have in order to make something uh, that I want so yeah see how I cut the whole thing through no I should have done 60% and then cut it by hand obviously a miter saw and a table saw would be a better thing to use than a skill saw or a circular saw whatever you want to call it uh, but I don't have that stuff I have a skill saw in fact I have like three of them that I got for free just you know contractors buying new tools and giving me the old ones and I always say yes to tools I usually say no to other stuff because I don't like clutter uh, but I do like tools here I'm using my number five uh, to plane this thing down but I should have used uh, one of those router jigs in fact I do have one because I used to make uh, trays like EDC trays uh, but I'm trying to get better at uh, hand planing so here I am using this terrible planer uh, for this beautiful piece of walnut just, but I'm learning how to hand plane so yeah hopefully I can get a the Nielsen soon or or even just the Stanley number four would be nice and with some movie magic we can sand all this ex extremely fast uh, putting some pencil marks down sanding it with a hundred grit and doing that a couple of times and this is how I rounded off the top uh, for the bottom I just did a 45 uh, I like how classy that looks um, I know a lot of people are doing a lot of big ground overs on TikTok right now, but that's not what I'm about right now. Hey, you're not supposed to do any shaping with sandpaper. Hey, what are you doing in my backyard? Oh, shit! For the bottom, I just went with a 45, and I just kept lowering it until I was pretty happy with the 45 chamfer that it left. I didn't go that deep. I could have gone deeper, but... I don't know. I can, you, I, it's my piece of furniture. I can always go back and, and make it deeper if I want it. You know, after I vacuumed it and blew it off and all that, took all the dust off it, I went ahead and added some mineral oil, uh, butcher block mineral oil. I like the walrus oil better than this mineral stuff, um, but this mineral stuff is what I had. Uh, I bought it at Home Depot. I'm there a lot, so I pick things up. Look at that Chateauans. There where I told you. Mm -hmm. About, look at that Chateauans. That's amazing. Mira, mamá. A ver, te voy a usar para enseñarte que estás en tu papá. You can do several coats of oil. Uh, you can even do a wax on top of that. But I did two coats on the top of the stool and I did one coat on the legs of mineral oil. This is just affordable stuff you can get at Home Depot. Once you're done saturating it and it soaked in a little bit into the wood, um, you can rub off the excess with a clean cloth. Um, it's got to be lint-free. I uh, just use an old shirt. 
now for the in order to attach the top with the legs all I used was some inserts on the top and then some screws to the through the top cross members and yeah once all that dried I gave it I gave it a few hours I should have given it a full day but I gave it a few hours now I sprayed the whole thing in and out ultimately did three coats on the top and one coat on the legs that's all the legs need I think if not I can uh, rough it up a little bit and shoot it some more.